Okay, so in the last part, we got our burette all ready to titrate. So we cleaned it, we filled it, we recorded our initial volume. Remember that's up here near the top. That initial volume was 0 0.38 milliliters. Uh, and then we needed to get our samples ready. Okay, so I just put a little label on my beakers, uh, or on my flask, excuse me. I put a little label so I know which one is trial one, trial two, and trial three. Uh, I wanna prep them all now, uh, and that way when I titrate, I can just titrate the next sample, the next sample, the next sample. Um, so here, again, we're using that pure KHP. I measured it out. Um, the amount was about poor. 0.4 grams or should be about 0.4 grams. Um, we'll have to, you'll have to calculate it based on the masses of the um, flask with and without the KHP in there. But we did use this KHP, pure KHP. Um, that's the only thing that's going to react with our sodium hydroxide. Uh, the sodium hydroxide in the burette is our base. This KHP is the acid. Um, so I measured that out into all my samples. Now I just want to dilute them um, so to dilute them, so to dilute them, I just want to dissolve them into water, okay? So I just want to put some water in here. Um, again, we're using some smaller flasks in the book calls for, so I'm going to use a little bit less water. I'm going to use about, let's say, 50 milliliters. Uh, for this measurement, it does not need to be exact line. And then I'm going to take those uh, flasks and swirl them to stir them up. Um, so that all that KHP dissolves. Okay, so this is the first sample. Once you have your solution ready, then you have to put your indicator in. Okay, so once it's So again, I'm just gonna look to make sure that I dissolve all of that KHP. I do wanna try to get it all dissolved before I start titrating. If you don't, it's not the end of the world. It will titrate. It will dissolve as you titrate it. In the flask, I have a clear solution. In the burette, I have a clear solution. So inside the burette, we have our base. Inside the flask, we have our acid. Uh, if I just started emptying this burette into my flask, I would never see a color change. Um, they're just two clear solutions. Um, I would never know when that reaction happens. Um, so I want to know exactly when that reaction happens. Um, so I need to have something to indicate that to me. I have to have some kind of visual cue to tell me, hey, this reaction has occurred. Um, you need to stop adding base at this point. Um, so what you're looking for is the, the equivalence point where you have um, stoichiometric amounts of acid and base in your flask. Okay. Um, so the indicator is going to be when you have like the tiniest amount, amount of base present in your flask, okay? So that means that all of our acid has been used up. Um, and remember that titrations involve a chemical reaction. So all this has to deal with molar ratios based on whatever our chemical reaction is. Um, so in our chemical reaction for this acid-base reaction, we have sodium hydroxide, NaOH, plus our KHP, remember that is our acid. You can see that uh, whole structure and formula in your book. Um, so those two things react. Remember that acid-base reactions or neutralization reactions make some kind of salt. In this case, it would become some kind of sodium KP, um, sodium KP salt there. Um, that's gonna be in our solution plus water. Remember from that aqueous reactions, um, that when we make water, we know we have a chemical reaction happening. So we're just gonna put two drops in each of them. I'm gonna go ahead and do that now so that I don't forget. And now all of my samples are ready to titrate. You may notice I have a couple pieces of paper around. Um, so I'm gonna use um, a piece of paper under my flask so that I can see when this color change happens. Um, the color change that you were looking for is a very light shade of pink. You don't want to add so much base that the indicator turns hot pink. Um, you're looking for a very light shade of pink, but that pink has to persist in the solution for at least a minute. 
okay? So um, if you add, so as you add your sodium hydroxide, you may see that pink color appear uh, and then it goes away. Um, you want that pink color to persist. Um, so I'm going to do this hydration in real time. So if I overshoot the endpoint, it's not a huge deal. Uh, I wanna start adding my sodium hydroxide slower in the next trials. Uh, but that is one reason why you're doing three trials, okay? So you can practice getting to that good um, pink color that you're looking for. So if you are doing this in lab, you would wanna have a couple people working here. Um, so you wanna have one that's kind of stirring the flask the whole time um, to make sure that that reaction's happening throughout everything, okay? You also want somebody who's kind of keeping an eye on the burette. Um, remember that while you are titrating any individual trial, the sodium hydroxide has to stay between zero and 50. It cannot go below 50. Um, you don't know what this volume is, so you will not be able to do your calculations. Uh, so somebody kind of keeping an eye on that, and then you also want to have somebody that's controlling the stop clock. Um, so you can start adding it slower when you start seeing that pink color. Okay, and I have my initial volume you want to make sure that you have your initial volume before you start your titration. And we'll get the final volume once we see that color change. I'm gonna be starting the flask, and then I'm going to be controlling the stopcock here. I'm gonna start adding the sodium hydroxide. When I start seeing that pink color, I wanna start adding that sodium hydroxide slowly. So as I swirl, that pink color is going away see it there and then as I keep stirring it goes away. Another reason for the paper so you can see that color change. Um, something that you would want to keep in mind if you had like a pink shirt on that day or your partner had a red notebook just kind of keep red or pink things away so that you're not seeing any colors that are not really there. Okay, so that color is going away as I keep stirring lasting a little longer. So the longer that at, that pink color stays, the slower I want to add my sodium hydroxide. And now I have it kind of at a dropwise pace. I'm going to stop that. The bad pink went away, so I'm not quite there to the point yet. Sometimes when you do a titration, um, you have a clear solution and you add one single drop and it just goes to bright pink, bright magenta immediately. It's okay. Um, don't panic. You can, it happens. Okay. Um, so kind of like there, I, I, I can get this lighter. This is a good trial. This is a good color, but you can get a lighter pink. So I'm gonna swirl it, make sure it stays there. Maybe it'll get lighter. I don't think it is. Okay, so we, we have reached the end point here. We have that color change. Now I wanna make sure that I get the final volume for trial one. Again, I'm going to use a piece of paper behind my burette so I can see that number a little better. So the final volume here will be 22.49, 22.49. Okay, so to calculate how much sodium hydroxide we added to this solution to get to our endpoint, this pink color, we want to do the final volume, which was our 22.49 milliliters minus the initial volume. The initial volume was 0 0.38, okay? So for this particular titration, I added about 22 milliliters. Um, and for my next trial, I don't necessarily have to refill it every single time up to the zero mark, okay? As long as I have about, this, about enough or close to enough to titrate, I can go ahead and just continue on with my titration. So for trial two, my initial volume is going to be 22.49, okay? we are at the 
that end point, that pink color. Uh, this is a good color. I think maybe it's a little lighter than last time. Maybe not. Um, but if you get every single titration in this color, that would be great. There's still room for improvement. I still can get this a little lighter. Maybe I will do that with my third trial. But I do want to make sure that I get um, my final volume before I move on. So I'll leave this. I'll leave this flask for comparison. So here for trial two, our final volume is going to be 39.71. 39.71. Okay, so now I don't have enough to titrate my next sample. Um, so I'm going to stop now and then I'm going to add sodium hydroxide just the same way I did before. <clears throat> and then I'll get my new initial volume to start um, trial three with. I'm getting my initial volume for trial three. Initial volume for trial three is going to be 0 0.15. 0 0.15. But um, this is trial three, and our final volume here is going 20.91, 20.91. Okay, so all of the titrations are finished for part A. Um, so for part B, uh, the procedure does not change at all. The only thing that changes is the substance you put in the flask. Okay, so here in these three trials, we put in pure KHP. Um, in, in part B, you're using a impure sample of KHP. And the goal of the calculations for part B is to calculate uh, how much uh, KHP is in your sample. Um, so the only thing in that unknown sample that will react with sodium hydroxide is the KHP. Um, so we will come back with part B. So we're about to start tar uh, part B. Um, here we're using the unknown KHP, so a percentage of this is something else that does not re react with our sodium hydroxide. So the goal of these calculations are a little different than your calculations for part A. And, um, so for part B, we know exactly what the concentration of our sodium hydroxide is, because we did our part A calculations. And then um, for part B, we need to figure out how much KHP is in these flasks, okay? So it's a percentage of our unknown, okay? So you're gonna try to try, you're going to figure out what percent KHP unknown B is. Okay, so I prepped the samples just like before. So I have my flask, I have them all ready to go um, for the titrations, just dissolving those, um, those samples of KHP. Sometimes the unknown is a little harder to dissolve in solution, so you might need to give it a little, couple, a little bit more time. Uh, and then you want to make sure that you remember to get your indicator. You always have to have a P, uh, the phenolphthalein indicator, or you will not see a color change at all. You will still, you will titrate forever and never get a color change if you forget your indicator. Okay, so I got my indicator and all those. Now I am ready to titrate. We'll start with trial one. I labeled my flask so I know which one is which. Before I do that, I wanna make sure that I have the initial volume of my sodium hydroxide. My initial volume, I haven't refilled it since trial three of part A, so it should be the same as our end volume, just in case. Uh, so it's 20.91. We 
have reached our end point for trial one. Again, it's the same paint color. This one is pretty light. Better than trial three of our last part, which was pretty bright. This is a good end point. Okay, so I want to take my final volume. My final volume here is 31.75. There we go. So we got our pink color. I don't think it's going to go away. Still there. Still there. Okay, so yeah, that is the color that you're shooting for. That very, very light shade of pink. Okay. Um, so kind of in comparison, this is, this is good. This is great color. This is probably, I would say this is probably as light as you're going to get it. Um, uh, in comparison, um, this is what we got for trial three in part A. I do need to refill my burette some. I'm not going to fill it all the way to the top because these are taking about eh, 15, 10, 10 to 15 milliliters. Uh, I still have about three in there, so I don't want to waste a whole bunch of sodium hydroxide. Uh, so I'm going to refill that, and then we'll be ready to go for trial three of part B. Initial volume for trial three, 23.20. Okay, so we're at that pink color, so we're at the end point here. We just have enough base to react with that present to react with that um, to indicate that color. So we're going to get our final volume for trial three. Final volume for trial three is 32.39. 32.39. Okay, so for the procedure part, now you're finished. Um, so the next thing that you would need to do is make sure that you clean up. Okay, so anything that's left in your burette must go into the waste container. Uh, anything that's left over uh, anywhere else must go in a waste container. You don't want to um, put anything back into that brown bottle, okay? So I have some, several flasks that I need to clean up. I, I need to put all of this into the waste container. Um, so there is going to be a waste container for acid-base reactions here. And then I need to clean all of this glassware. Remember when you clean glassware that you must put soap in it, brush it out, rinse it out until it is clean. Just throwing some soap in it isn't going to do it. Uh, and then we'll leave all this glassware on the, all the glassware on the drying rack and be finished with the lab. One last thing I did want to mention before, um, before we're finished with this is cleaning the burette. So I've emptied the burette of all the sodium hydroxide. Um, for the next person who uses this, you want to make sure that you clean it with lots of distilled water. So run distilled water in there to rinse out all that sodium hydroxide, uh, including the tips. You don't want to clog the tip with dried out sodium hydroxide. So clean all of your glassware with the soap and water um, and brush it out. And then your burette, you do need to rinse out with lots of distilled water before you can put it back where you got it from. Um, so to store your burette, you want to leave it the way you found it, which should be um, on the burette stand, upside down with the stock cock open, um, so that it can drain um, from rinsing it out with that sodium, uh, rinsing it out with water. Okay, so to clean the burette, rinse it out with lots of distilled water.